listeners, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are happy to welcome uh, Dr. Louis Carlos um, as our guest at the interview today. Um, uh, Dr. Carlos, um, uh, please uh, introduce us more. Okay, so uh, my name is Luis Carlos and uh, I'm, I work in the University of Aveiro, Portugal, in the uh, CISECO Aveiro Institute of Materials, and we work on um, optical materials uh, for several applications. This kind of materials uh, emit light when they were excited by mm. usually by light of a certain wavelength and then they convert that wavelength in another color, in another wavelength. And that light can be used for several applications. For instance, could be used in energy for uh, assembling or for fabricating lumination solar concentrators, which are devices that can be coupled to solar cells to improve the energy harvesting of the solar spectrum. But that light could be also used in biomedicine. In particular, and this is uh, probably um, one of the main uh, research interests of our group, is to use that light for measuring the temperature. Okay, so this is a remote sensing method which works very well at the nanoscale. Why? Because we can use nanomaterials, we can use nanoparticles uh, with dimensions less than 100 nanometers. These particles can be excited and emitted light and we can use that light to sense the lo local temperature surrounding the particles, okay? And this is uh, uh, one of the uh, very important breakthroughs in optical materials in the last decade. And this method of uh, remote detection of the temperature could be used not only for diagnostic, I can give one example, for instance, the, the temperature of cancer cells is higher than the temperature of normal cells. Why? Because the metabolism of cancer cells is different and then they produce much more. They, they release, in fact, uh, energy and that energy increases the temperature in average uh, up to 1.5 degrees. And this increment of temperature can be sensing by the light emitted by a nanoparticle that is, for instance, uh, embedded into the tumor, okay? Mm -hmm. So that remote detection is useful for diagnostic, but could be also useful for therapeutic because there are some methods of, of therapeutics. Uh, people call them uh, hyperthermal methods. Okay, these hyperthermal methods, uh, the goal is to increase the local temperature of the tumor above a certain level, inducing the cell death, inducing the cell apoptosis. And these methods, some of them are already in clinical uses, but these methods uh, actually they have a problem, which is the precise control of the local temperature. If we have uh, these particles that emit light and if that light could be uh, useful for sense temperature, so we can use uh, the particles and their light emitting features to optimize uh, these uh, um, methods of uh, these uh, hyperthermal methods. Thank you. So in brief, this, these are what we are doing here. 
Sure. Um, thank you so much for this. Um, it is very exciting to learn that the temperature of the cancer cells 1.5 degrees higher than the normal cells. And if we go uh, above that, then the cells will undergo apoptosis. So this is something that I also learned for myself uh, newly today. Um, talking about translation, <clears throat> um, do you run in your research laboratory any clinical studies, clinical trials, in order to prove the effect of those components that you developed? Uh, no, in, here in Aveiro, we do not develop any, any clinical uh, essays or even we are not uh, enrolled in, uh, in the translation of the research uh, in the lab into the clinics, but we cooperate with groups since uh, around the world uh, in which that translation is done. For instance, I can give you two examples. In Saragossa, in Spain, there is a research group with a, a strong connection to uh, local hospitals in which they are enrolled in the intracellular temperature measurements. So, uh, measuring or trying to measuring the temperature inside the cells. And also in Spain, in Madrid, there are a group uh, uh, that works in vivo. So they use it small animals and these small animals are models for uh, the determinate for temperature images in vivo. Mm -hmm. It is very collaborative. Uh, it is good to hear that there is such level of collaboration. Um, uh, speaking about the methodology and the background of those people who are working at your lab, uh, who are they? Uh, yeah, this is a very, very important question. So this kind of research is a multidisciplinary research. So uh, we need to merge together people from different uh, backgrounds. You know, we need, of course, uh, biologists, but also we need um, uh, physical engineering uh, and uh, people with a more solid background in physics and mathematics to perform the models so it's um, and besides of course uh, the people that produce the particles that should or must have um, a chemistry uh, background so it's a merge you know it's a merge of different disciplines different backgrounds and this is fundamental this is crucial for the for the research. Otherwise, uh, we, we have um, a partial vision of the subject, and this is not enough for the, the, the developing of, of the research. Sure. Um, the new projects that uh, are coming and those projects that you have in mind, uh, how do they arise? Are they coming depending on which type of funding is available and the grant proposal? Or they are coming from the students or they are coming from you, maybe from other sources. Um, what are the sources of inspiration for those projects? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I can say that we have maybe two main, two main sources. One and the principal is the, you know, we are developing a uh, uh, possible solutions for a particular problem. And during this process, during this pathway, we found new challenges. Uh, we found new problems, okay? And, and uh, some of them <clears throat> uh, start to grow and start to gain maturity and they become our next, next project. So for instance, I can mention we start this idea of using light to measuring temperature in 2010. Then maybe 
18, 18 years after the first studies, we realized that the, the light emission can gain, can, can have information about the surroundings of the particles. And one example of that is that if we, if we use a, a dispersion of the particles in water, uh, we can use the temperature dependence of the light emission to study the properties of the water, of the liquid water. Then uh, this project, I mean, study the, the um, anomalies of the liquid water. Anomalies means uh, comparing to other liquids. The properties of liquid water are quite strange. So this project born as a consequence of the studies about uh, sensing temperature at the nanoscale. So th this is one example of something that uh, appeared as a result of, this, of the research that we perform. In some cases, we also uh, receive challenges from colleagues of, or from companies. So, for instance, um, you know that uh, near near infrared uh, light uh, is start to be now used in microscopes hmm. because people, people realize that um, the near infrared light can penetrate deep into the into the tissues, and then using a, a conventional microscope, but using near infrared light we can have images of of the tissues with a very high resolution okay and this is not invasive like for instance nuclear magnetic resonance images so uh in parallel of these uh, developments of uh, near infrared microscope we can use near infrared the, the near infrared light uh, for sensing the local temperature of the of the of the center that emit that light. So this means that the microscopes can have a, an additional tool that permits to get thermal images. Right. Okay. So uh, and this is something that, of course, this is at the uh, research lab stage so uh, but uh, some companies are uh, already interested on that because the companies produce the microscopes or they are all on the market of the near infrared image and so this project uh, rises a little bit induced by the by the interest of the companies Sure, it is very interesting application and of course it will generate more information and data for those researchers who will be using such uh, tool with such additional feature equipped. Um, speaking in broad, um, what is your uh, mission uh, with the research? What is the one big goal that you would like to achieve uh, one day in the future? Yeah, it, it's not an easy question. Of course, there are um, uh, a driving force uh, towards a, a better understanding of the, of the fundamentals of the process. But I can say that probably the, the main objective is be able to um, implement uh, in a practical device the possibility of doing thermal images and you using these thermal maps and these thermal maps could be thermal maps of a, a device or a thermal map of a tissue or even a, a thermal map of a part of a human body and this will permit as i mentioned before uh, do diagnostic and eventually improve some therapeutic methods that involves heat 
as the as the main source of the method. So thank you so much for this information. Um, I believe that our uh, viewers can be also those who are still young researchers, they are students, uh, they are uh, PhD, master students, bachelor, but some of them, they can be also scientists. And we can have here several groups. We can have potentially also those who are investors and they are looking for ventures in life and medical fields to invest, as well as we can have some patients uh, who are searching for information in the web um, in order to do uh, some treatment or maybe find better therapy available and point the doctor um, to it. Which message would you send across to those uh, three different groups of people, those who want to join your lab, those who are patients, and those who are investors? Yeah, for the students, I think the main message is that uh, um, if, if they have passion, uh, if they have curiosity, they need or they can follow uh, uh, a time in research. Okay, so research is make only sense if the people likes to know things. Okay, so if it is the case of the if the students like no, like no more, so research is clearly a, 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 an option. Uh, for the for, for the other groups, so my main message is that uh, optical materials and in particular uh, light emitting nanomaterials, they are really uh, amazing objects in the sense that the light that they emit is a function of the surrounding properties, okay? And in particular, the, de the dependence in temperature of that light can give information about the, the temperature of the surroundings. And this has a, a great potential because it's a, a, a way to sense temperature at the nanoscale that cannot be done using conventional thermometers. Why? Because the conventional thermometers, the size is, is, is larger than the size of the, of the uh, nano domain or micro domain that I intend to sense it. Okay? So the only way to do this, to do temperature measurements at the nanoscale is uh, using uh, lumin uh, remote se sensing methods like lumination thermometry. Sure, and about the patients, in case if some patients are searching for some new ways of treatment, um, at least what is the latest uh, stage of the advancement in this field? Yeah, yeah, you know that, and this is this message uh, must be stressed uh, because sometimes people receive, you know, um, an illusion that uh, the research which is development in the lab uh, can be uh, translated to the to the real problems in a very short period of time. This is not the case, okay? It takes longer, a long, a long period to translate things that are, that are valid at the laboratory level to, to the clinical level. For instance, I can give a, an example. Magneto hyperthermic. It's a, a method in which the, the cancer cells are destroyed by heat, and this heat is generated by magnetic nanoparticles that are injected into, into the tumors. This is a method that reach the clinical uh, level, okay? It, some hospitals in Europe use it, it, but it is not 
generalize it because there are some problems related to the to the toxicity of the particles for instance or to the to the control uh, to, to the accurate control of the temperature okay so despite the the huge potential of the method and despite all the research done in laboratory and in in hospitals using the method there are some problems to solve so the message is believe in science believe that science can 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 help the problems we saw this in a very clear way with the, the covid-19 pandemic in which in which the vaccines gives a, a strong uh, uh, input to pass over that very dark period but it it takes time so it takes time to translate things from the lab stage to the to the to the to the hospitals and to treat real uh, problems sure um thank you so much for this information would there be anything else you would like to share with our viewers besides that what we already spoken about no i think that we we cover uh, uh, the majority of the things that we are doing here so i i, I acknowledge your questions Good. Thank you so much for the interview. It was our pleasure to have you. Okay. Bye-bye.